Hey, welcome back students. This is part two of my racing game tutorial. In this step two, we're going to begin by adding what I call the decay function. What that is, is when the car hits the green of the background, either around the edges or in the center of the screen, the car will slow down rather quickly and come to a stop. This is uh, is acting as if the car goes off off the racetrack and gets bogged down and stopped. Let's see how we would do that. We have the racer sprite selected and in that we're going to add a new when green flag clicked and in that under control we're going to add another forever block. Now in that we're going to add an if statement because we want to check if a condition is true. That condition will be whether or not the car is touching a color. That's under the sensing block. So go to the light blue area and find the touching color block and place that here. Now, you can see there's a green color in there by default, but it's the wrong green color. We need to make sure the color here is the same as this color. So click in this color area and then with the uh, dropper tool, which you select down here, come out and make sure you select the green of the background. That's really important. Now, inside this if statement, we're going to set the value of our x speed variable. So go to the variable area and choose the set x speed to block and place that in here. What we want to do is set the x speed to its current value and multiply that value by 0 0.9. Here's how we do that. We go to operators, find the multiplication block, which is the third one down here, and place it inside where the 0 is. This will allow us to take a value and multiply it by a number. Go over to your variables section, find the x speed value here, place it in the left hand side of the equation, and on the right put 0 0.9. So again, whenever a value is multiplied by something less than 1, that value will get smaller. So this is going to, in, in essence, this is going to reduce the value of x speed by about 10% every time the car is touching the green color of the background. And so it will slow it down pretty quickly. Now, we gotta do it for both X speed and Y speed. So come in and get set, get another set block, choose Y speed, come over and choose the Y speed value, place it on the left side of the calculation, leave the multiplication block here. Again, that's multiplication, not addition. Choose Y speed and multiply it by 0 0.9. Okay, now if we do that, when the car touches the green, it should slow down. Let's check that real quick. If we move the car into that, and then we'll see eventually the car slows down. It takes a second, but it gets back to X and Y speed being uh, having the value of 0. So again, we'll just kind of speed it up here and get off into the grass and slowly. The values of x and y speed will go down and decay until they get to the value of zero and the car is completely stopped. That's the way it should work. The next step in our game is to program the finish line sprite. Select the finish line sprite in the sprite window. And the first thing we're going to do is create some new variables. So go to variable palette, click on make a variable. And we're going to first create a variable called laps. So keep track of the number of laps we've completed around the racetrack. And the other variable is called total time, total time. I like to not put any spaces in my variable names. That's just my preference. Now again, with finish line sprite selected, let's go to events, when green flag clicked. When the game first starts, we need to set our laps to zero and we need to set our total time to zero. Now actually I'm going to suggest that you set your laps when the game first starts to negative one. The reason for that, when the game first starts, your car will be located right above the finish line and you will cross it immediately. And so we want to go from negative one to zero so that when the game starts out, the car is actually at zero until it goes all the way around and passes the finish line again. So I suggest setting laps to negative one, total time to zero. Now let's go over to the sensing palette and find our timer object. The timer is built into the program and when you turn it on by clicking here in the box next to it, you will now be able to see the timer in the window. It's built into Scratch. What we want to do now is 
reset the timer and that will cause the timer every time we click the green flag the timer will get set set back to zero let's try that real quick if i click the green flag you'll see that the timer gets back set back to zero every time i click that so that's going to be our overall timer for the game we don't really need to see the x and y speed any longer so let's turn those off here's how you do that go back to your variable palette and uncheck the marks next to x and y speed we really only need to see laps total time and timer let's lay those out there next go to control pull out a forever block place it here underneath reset timer and inside that we need an if statement now again we're inside the finish line sprite and what we want to do is ask whenever or if the car is touching the finish line so let's go to sensing pull out a touching block from the top and change this to racer so now whenever the finish line is touching the racer something will happen under looks let's pull out a say for two seconds now we don't want to say hello instead we want to say the value of the timer so again go back to sensing find timer here and pull that into the first left hand side and we'll say the timer for just one second now when we cross over with the car it's going to say the value there in the think box or the say box let's go back to the variable area we want to change now laps by one which will increase the lap number of laps that we've completed change total time by the value of the timer so whatever is in the timer at that point will be added to the total time which we're keeping track of and then since we've completed one lap we want to reset the timer again to zero and then start over with that timer so that next time we go around the lap we can add that value into our total time one more thing we need to do under control we need to wait for one second this is necessary because if we don't put that in there then the uh, these values like laps etc will change multiple times as long as the car is touching the finish line and it takes a little bit of time maybe half a second for the car to proceed over the finish line and in that amount of time uh, laps can uh, accumulate etc so we need to wait a little bit until the car gets past the finish line okay we're getting close to finishing this game the next step is to control the changing of the backdrops whenever we make a new lap. We're still inside the finish line sprite. Let's go to control, add three more if statements. One, two, three. We're going to go to the operators and look for the equal sign and pull one of those into each of these if blocks. Go back to variables and pull out our laps and put it on the left hand side of each equation. We're going to check if laps is 1, 2, or 3. Now it's important to note that these three if statements are not inside the first if statement. Okay, This is a forever loop that has four separate if statements in it. So if laps equals 1, over in the looks area, we will switch the backdrop to medium. Remember, we began on the easy backdrop. If laps equals two, switch backdrop to the hard. And if laps equals three, then the game is over. And we're not going to switch the backdrop, but instead we're going to reveal our game over sprite. So let's create a game over sprite. I'll show you what I mean. Let's come in here. We're going to paint a new backdrop. I'll just go ahead and do this real quickly and speed it up. You simply want a sprite that says game over like this. First of all, let's rename the sprite game over screen we don't want to see this sprite when the game starts so let's go to the code view when green flag clicked go to looks hide it when the green flag is clicked 
All right, click the green flag, it goes away. Now let's go back to our finish line. When laps gets to three, again, the game is over, and so we want to show this game over sprite that we just created. However, we can't control one sprite from another, so we can't show the game over sprite from the finish line sprite. So instead, we have to broadcast a message. Go to the events palette, find the broadcast message, place it here, and instead of message one, let's make a new message. The message will be game over. Now let's go over to our game over sprite and find the when I receive block. When I receive game over, we should show this sprite. Now if you test this and you go all the way around to your third lap, once you get to the third lap, your game over sprite will be revealed, it will be shown, and it will cover up the rest of the screen. The last thing you can do in this block is bring out the stop all. So when the game is over, you show the sprite and you stop all the code in all the other sprites. Now it's very important that you use this block, stop all, very carefully. You can only use it when you want your game to completely stop. Because if you use it somewhere else, you could accidentally turn off all your code when you don't mean to. Okay, that's it for this game design project in Scratch. I hope you enjoyed it. I encourage you to make it your own, add some extra features, improve the game, maybe even make a two-car racer game, and uh, have fun with it. See you next time.